um, you know, when we started Finas in 2016, actually, yeah, the first two or three years were really all about enablement, enablement, enablement. There were a, and there still is effectively a very broad fork or spectrum of um, expertise, you know, mostly into the how engaging in open source uh, needs to be done as a regulated industry, you know, from a legal and compliance standpoint, from even a technology tool chain standpoint. But uh, in our experience, um, even regulated industries are able to address the how once the why is absolutely clear. And once you have a strong business case as to why you would wanna, you know, uh, enter open source uh, or an open source collaboration with your, you know, some of your competitors, for example. Um, and so I think it all starts from the why. Mm -hmm. um, and that is in a way the, the, actually the way you can bring, uh, you know, this whole spectrum engaged, meaning the, the ones that are least expert in participating in open source communities, well, engage them in the problem space. Engagement into what are your biggest challenges and help us prioritize what's important to you strategically. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, okay, hopefully we can move you through the maturity chain and have you being able to put developers and influence the direction of the project. But I think that's one key um, sort of Things that, thing that we learned over the last few years. Um, another stepping stone is open standards. Uh, banks are more familiar with open standards mm -hmm. than with open source through sort of years and years of uh, consortia and you know, standardization to sort of different levels of, of success. Uh, but that's also been a good sort of stepping stone. Uh, and then the last point to me is, you know, you touched on it, it's transparency. Uh, the only way to bring everyone together, ultimately, is, is building, being relentless about trust. Mm -hmm. uh, the moment you start cut, cutting corners in any way, uh, sort of departing from the very transparent ethos of open source, again, with the caveat that we do certain things sometimes, sort of on a time-bound basis, in a more private way, to, you know, we're conscious this is a regulated industry, but, um, Trust is sort of at the, the fuel or the gas, I guess, mm -hmm. that, that fuels the collaboration. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I mean, just at the, uh, you know, building on that, I think the, the, if you have the why and, that, yeah. and the value, you know, as, as you know, that, that central point, the momentum you build around it, and then the, view, the realization that it's, it's not, there's not one size fits all, right, to Gab's point, that yep. the, the, how, you, how you configure the, the governance and the engagement and, the, um, and, you, and how you manage it, right, this is the reason that, you know, this is the reason that, you know, why Finos and Hyperledger, and Linux and Hyperledger, you know, exist, is the, is the you know, the professionalism around managing that community is super important, yeah. so that you could, you know, you could make central banks comfortable right that their you know their needs requirements and voices standards are are you know are being met by the code that's being developed it's you know the, you, you're addressing the quality issues the security issues you know etc that it really is a um, it, it, the, the community the community the approach all has to be then configured to the needs of of how it's going to be used and and the stakeholders uh, and the standards and so um, momentum Active governance and yep. you know and you know that's that's matched to the to the community's needs uh, and that core of doing something really valuable. Yeah, it's kind of the and recipe. So and it's interesting. I was going to say it's interesting. You mentioned uh, regulators because I think specifically for CBDC, again, I keep going back to sort of this idea of open governance. Of course, you know, there's a debate whether you know what the role the the public sector and the private sector should play in in digital currency i think actually open source and open governance can really provide sort of i think you were i think i heard you talking about that in a panel a couple of weeks ago in new york <laughs> uh, um, as to how open source could actually provide this place where both public and private sector including regulators uh, can come together to govern from the get-go providing this level playing field so that there's no sort of again uh, doubt that either of the parties is gonna 